Good day, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to more Sloppy Second Channel content. I'm going to get straight into the thick of this one because, uh, well, hesitation and pause champing is a hard-pressed thing to do. And to be fair, this video is already going to be quite long as it is because we have been delving ourselves deep into the world of the SCP universe. And although this video is a little bit old, I thought it would be kind of fun to look at what people consider to be the most terrifying SCPs. And I suppose this being an older video means we're going to get a much more organic view of the sort of founding terrors of this universe. Hello there. Specifically as well, and this is maybe a bit more of a personal thing, I, the, the more modern SCP universe feels a bit diluted. So looking at what kind of made the SCP back in the day be as terrifying as it is, is interesting. So uh, there'll be a link to this video down below, and I want to see what people perceive as being terrifying, because I love this universe. I love this idea of, the, of what the SCP stands for. And if there's nothing else, I do like me some creepiness, so... Let's, uh, let's have a little look. Let's see what this is all about. The SCP Foundation, short for Secure, Contain, Protect, are an organization that catalog mysterious items and locations from the public, mm -hmm. study them for this. their potential uses, and deal with them appropriately. Some That's items not an SCP, have that's just a happy little boy. Yet remedial that is a happy uses, boy. And others are downright terrifying. Yeah, they are. Not much is known about the organization. But there is a limited... One thing I will say is that um, it's very interesting to see the interpretation of the SCP Foundation and its universe based on the different content creators. Like, every every animation or every, like, creator that I see doing work with SCP what, uh, stuff kind of has a different interpretation with the fundamentals being the same. And it's always interesting to see what kind of gets derived and what gets um, interpreted by different people. Because it, although it's all based around the same kind of thing, the way the way it ends up get, getting presented is entirely different based on the person who kind of extrapolates it all. So, hmm, I've been interested. Amount of leaked public information that you can find on the SCP wiki. There are thousands to go through. I think I remember Some playing this game. More detailed than others. Like the endless but stairway. But here are my top ten oh, God. terrifying SCPs. But if there's anything more scary than a massive fall, it's like. Liminal space. That's probably why the uh, back rooms scare me so much. Liminal spaces horrify me. Things that don't abide, abide by the laws of number ten reality. SCP nine nine three. Bubble the clown. Object. Okay. This isn't an, even an SCP. This is just a straight up clown. Clowns are horrifying. It's class safe. SCP-993 is a children's television program entitled Bubble the Clown. It seems to have been- Yeah, no, that, that, that's just a straight up clown. You wouldn't even need it to be an SCP. Just, uh, no, no, made no, in the horrifying. Style of an educational cartoon, with the primary plot of most episodes being the title of character, Bubble the Clown, learning a new skill or activity. The oh probe. god! Oh my god, I'm so scared! Oh, oh my one fear above all else! Education! Ah! Program appears to have no supporting cast, and the set of the program often changes between episodes. SCP-993's anomalous properties become I obvious the fact they when the program is viewed. Uh, Warner Brothers Anyone first. watching aged 10 years or older will immediately fall unconscious when what? the program begins and will remain incapacitated until the end of the program. Later, reporting... So, the average experience of watching a Shy Lily stream? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, no, no hate, no hate. Stabbing a headache immediately before blacking out. Children under the age of 10 viewing SCP-993 later report that it teaches and advocates activities such as cannibalism, murder, torture, and... More. You mean cannibalism is a bad thing? appear to become ingrained in the subject's mind. Repeated exposure to SCP-993 can result in permanent psychosis and schizophrenic symptoms. Episodes of like SCP-993 are regularly broadcast from a currently unknown source, but since after... So, okay, so this is kind of what I mean, right? Like, the older kind of presentation of SCPs were a lot more kind of like grounded and copy past uh, sorry not copy past uh, creepy pasta style like i feel like over the years scp has kind of become more grandeur a bit more i don't know um i don't want to say like fantastical but 
the older SCPs felt a bit maybe grounded, but maybe a bit more gritty, I think. I don't know. I, 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 I'm not saying like modern SCP stuff is bad. It's just there was a certain like feel to older SCP content. It's discovery. All broadcasts have been successfully intercepted using Protocol Upsilon Beta 3 and blocked from public viewing. Yeah, it's a the esoteric and description of, it. of a few episodes can be found on the SCP Wiki. I don't think it's necessarily a bad way of depicting SCP content. It's just something I've noticed. Number 9. SCP-409. Contagious Crystal. Okay, so if a clown is the baseline, and in my mind, if there's nothing scarier than a clown, what in God's green earth are we going to get that's apparently scarier? Object class, Keta. SCP-409 resembles a large quartz crystal, approximately 1.5 meters tall and 0.6 meters wide. Huh? Any objects coming in contact with SCP-409 will Let be- Let me guess, anyone who touches the crystal becomes a crystal. Like, that is one of the most creepy past three creepy pasta things you could ever have. I cannot tell you the amount of creepy pasta pastas I've heard where it's like, oh, you touch the thing, oh, you transform. Oh, you did a transform. Like, you watched one Lola Bunny video and you transform into a furry. <laughs> Begin to crystallize after three hours. Yeah, that's what I thought. This effect will occur in See, any This is even something, this is like a, 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 this is a, this is kind of like a, a, um, a theming that's even been done outside of the SCP. That's like, that's a Star Trek thing. Like, that whole theme has been done in Star Trek, um, Star Wars even, I think. Oh, what, uh, Warhammer. Yeah, that's like a very quintessential creepypasta metric. The crystallization will spread by approximately 2.5 centimeters per minute. Per minute? And will convert Damn, the entire dude, object so you're gonna get stoned real quick. inside out. Subjects report this effect to be extremely painful. <laughs> and similar well, to frostbite. Duh. After complete crystallization, the objects will be- Patients also report the process of dying to be uncomfortable, and that the sun is hot, and the sky is blue, and the grass grows, and that brother, you should tier three sub to Makari. Begin to make snapping and creaking noises for approximately 20 minutes. Like being in a Batman episode and being frozen of by Dr. Reed. Great force. Chill out! And then you get pushed Anything over and shattered into a million pieces. Touching a fragment will immediately begin to crystallize. Nothing at this time is able to reverse the effect in organic matter, including amputation of affected- That's something I've noticed as well. Like, there's a, 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 a premise that the, like, almost all SCP things kind of rely on with storytelling is usually there's an element of body horror areas. Inorganic matter will only crystallize so that's kind of for a few centimeters to make you feel uncomfortable. around the point of contact. I mean, not always, SCP but there's always, was I think SCP, like, the thing about SCP, the thing about backrooms is it all derives to making you feel uncomfortable. And there's usually, there's, there, there's usually not a fear of using body horror and goriness to kind of emphasize that. Big, big leaning on transformations I noticed as well. Under a pile of crystal shards. I suppose that's kind of to relate deep. to the person. Because you, you wouldn't want it to happen, have to happen to you. Were high. There's being stoned, but then there's being stoned. Number eight, SCP-682. Hard to destroy reptile. Yeah, my I boy! Why is this one up there? SCP-682 is just a happy little guy doing happy little things. Object class, Keita. SCP-682 is a large reptile looking creature. Its origin is unknown. It is extremely intelligent and has been seen to observe in complex communication with SCP-079 during limited exposure with one another. I've seen, I've seen so many SCP videos of 682 seems to have a hatred of all life, which has been expressed numerous times during interviews. Are we sure that that's not, they're not just trying to describe the average Reddit mod? I don't know. Hatred of all things? Yeah? On top of this, SCP-682 has been observed to have high strength, speed, and reflexes, and though the amounts vary depending on its condition. SCP-682's physical form grows and changes Why drastically, did you throw a live chicken increasing in there, you or mean decreasing bastard. in size when it consumes Run away, shits. fly boy! Run away! Anything SCP-682 ingests, organic or inorganic, gives it energy. 
SCP-682 has a set of gills which oh no. can remove oh no, please don't usable matter watch from any liquid chicken. solution, making it so it can constantly regenerate from the acid Run away, it is contained in. Oh this no. is oh, where oh, SCP-682 oh, 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 shines. Is its and regenerative dead. capabilities and resilience are astounding. It has been seen moving and speaking, having 87% of its body destroyed. An experiment of whether or not SCP-409 could kill SCP-682 took place. The crystallization began oh, I know, I know. and spread at a slower pace. It's just the natural way. Four hours later, SCP-682 shown signs of extreme pain and started having seizures. An hour later, crystal convert. If I'm not mistaken, I think this is like there's a whole series from one YouTuber dedicated to. The many failed attempts of how they've tried to destroy SCP-682. Because it is, it is like one of the most, it is one of the oldest SCPs, but it's also like one of the most, like, well doc, I say well documented, but it is basically the, the, the hard to destroy reptile. And every time they try to destroy it, it adapts and usually kills a dozen or so people. Version stopped at 62%. The crystallized parts exploded. Causing massive trauma to SCP-682. It like, does the whole regeneration thing SCP-682 well. began recovering. Like, it, it's kind of like Margin Boo or Cell. Even if like a part of it survives, it just regenerates from that like small tiny piece. An hour later, and stated, it would kill and consume all staff involved in this experiment. Yeah, yeah, just a sassy, Number sassy seven. boy, just a sassy SCP boy. SCP-087. The man? stairwell. Oh, this one. Object okay, class this one Euclid. creeps me the fuck out again. Monstrous monstrosities, fine. I can deal with that. But never-ending... Dude, I used to have nightmares about endless corridors and endless tightropes. In fact, I remember when I was a fucking kid, I used to have this repeating nightmare of being on a podium. And the only way I could go was across this massive uh, trapeze line that went off into the distance. And below me was this mass of... Gunk is best I could describe it. And I the, the dream would always go the same. I, I would run across this tightrope endlessly. And inevitably I would fall into the gunk and then wake up. And it's the exact same feeling I have when I think about this kind of thing. I've 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 read things about the stairwell. And just everything to do with the back rooms. Liminal spaces terrify me. SCP-87 is an unlit platform staircase. Stairs descend on a 38 degree angle for 13 steps before reaching a semicircular platform of approximately 3 meters in diameter. Descent direction rotates at 180 degrees well. at each platform. The design of SCP-87 limits subjects to a visual range of approximately kind of 1.5 flights. A light source is required for any subject exploring SCP-87 as there are no light fixtures or windows present. Lighting sources brighter than 75 watts have shown to be ineffective, as SCP-87 seems to absorb excess light. Subjects report and audio recordings confirm. Oh yeah, the no, I remember the, the game. I think I remember this was like something that Markiplier played back in the day. Like, uh, it was literally like an air, like. You would just go down and down and down and down and down and down and down. And the entire game process was going through the levels and then occasionally you'd have something happen. And you get like, I can't remember what floor it is. You get to the second floor and then something happens. It's kind of wild. Pleading children estimated to be located approximately 200 meters whole, like, below the initial platform. Silent Hill PT However, vibe to any it. attempts to descend the staircase have failed to bring subjects closer to the source. The depth of the descent, calculated from Exploration 4, the longest exploration, is shown to be beyond both the possible structure of both the building and geological surroundings. At this time, it is unknown if SCP-87 has an endpoint. SCP-87 has undergone four video recording explorations by Class D personnel, each subject conducting an exploration has encountered SCP-87-1, which appears as a face oh. with no visible pupils, nostrils, or mouth. I hate. Okay, it's not. It's not the manifestation that bugs me. 
It's hollowed faces in the darkness. Like, it's like looking at something with obscured vision. And it's the same kind of fear that I have of something that's like looking at me from around a corner, but then dips out of sight. Or something that's looking at you that's slightly obscured by darkness. Anything like that is a, is a big phobia of mine. Like, I'm not, I'm not a pussy. I am not a, a easily scared by things. But I can, I, I can be creeped out. That kind of shit just makes my skin crawl. The nature of SCP-87-1 is entirely unclear, but it has been determined that it is not the source of the pleading. Subjects exhibit feelings of intense paranoia hey, Nero. and Guys, fear Nero when is my, faced uh, with SCP-87-1, but it is undetermined whether said feelings are abnormal or simply a natural reaction. Oh my gosh. Ah, oh, just even thinking Number about six, that. Mm. SCP. I, I think, okay, a bit of a personal thing. I think one of the reasons why I'm slightly creeped out by things that are in the darkness, it's not about the darkness that bugs me. It's the fear of obscurity and the fear of not knowing what's there. Like when I was a kid, and I don't know if any, any of you guys used to do this. If I was ever the last kid in a classroom, or if I was ever the last kid downstairs, and I had to go upstairs to bed, and everybody else was upstairs, I used to turn the TV off. And I used to have my arm stretched out onto the light switch. So the second I flipped the light off, I could run upstairs. And even to this day, even now, if I, if I'm like downstairs by myself, and I, if my anxiety is getting better at me, when I run, when I, when I'm walking upstairs, I still get that like fight or flight sense of, oh, you should run upstairs. Like you should run upstairs. You don't know what's behind you anymore. It's dark down there. Like, even now, I still get that, like, anxiety going up my spine if I have to run, if I have to come upstairs by myself with no one else there. It's the fear of not knowing what's there. It's the fear of obscurity. It's, 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 it's a, uh, I don't know what the phobia is. It's not nyctophobia, because that's just the uh, fear of the dark in general. I know there's a phobia for it, but that's, I think, a big lead into my fear of, um, liminal spaces, my fear of, uh, obscured faces. And it's also why I don't like going anywhere by myself, because if I'm with someone else, I can have my fear of what's not knowing be validated by someone else. Ah, oh, dude, no, I, I, ah! I don't think that I would do well doing shit by myself. E2030. Laugh is fun. Object L -A -U -G -H. class Keta. SCP-2030 is an anomalous phenomenon that takes the form as a TV series. SCP-2030 will change depending on the popular video viewing trend at the time, such as automated DVD rental kiosks, file video sharing websites, and on-demand video streaming services. Before 2012, SCP-2030 would commonly take up ref- Wait, HD 720p 30fps? Man, this is the average co quality of content from uh, YouTubers back in 2015. <laughs> Huge as a DVD set in a local video rental store, and before 2003, oh no, it's going to be VHSs. Seinfeld, but better. Currently, there's been no evidence that SCP-2030 took a manifested form before 1993, but 38 seasons of programming are known to exist, implying that SCP-2030 has been active since 1976. So the dawn the title of, of the show varies. Typically, or laugh least, uh, is fun, digital television? but has been known to be laugh is life, or laugh is laugh, or more. No box art is associated with the object, but rather takes the image of other TV series. Bro, if this tried taking the image of MTV, it would have ended up being uh, just a, just an image of uh, a, gra a gravestone. Here lies MTV. Died so everyone else could run. <laughs> Which can cause victims to view it mistaking it for something else. When viewed, the show appears to be a hidden camera comedy show. The participants reacting to various bizarre situations. Episodes are about 10 minutes long and feature an open and close segment, but never okay. any credits. So, if the they don't the have ads, that are already better SCP than 90% of American television. Appears as a human adult male that serves as the host of the show. Who covers the opening? Wait a minute, is this all just a? Is this is this is this has been hotel before has been hotel was called? Ah, welcome to the show, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to live, laugh, and love. And if you don't laugh, you ain't gonna live, baby. In close segments of the show, 
also interviews the victims oh, to reveal magnified. their on a hidden camera show. The host is only ever shown from the neck down, making identification oh, difficult. Oh shit! Um, wasn't? Oh, I think this is. I think that's a reference to the Twilight Zone. Oh, what? Well, because uh, I know, like, there's a there's a SCP um there's an SCP animator who does something similar called Doctor Bob. Uh, he does something very similar where it's this idea of having the presenter have their face be completely obscured. The only time you ever see them is from the neck down, uh, or their face is always obscured by something. Which is a concept that would be shamelessly stolen by cow and chicken only in reverse uh, about 20 years later. <laughs> you know, with mom and dad, where you only see them from the waist down. <laughs> First to himself as Laffy McLafferson. Ah, the subjects that participate the most in the creative show VTuber often name. react panicked or distressed, but calm down at the presence of Laffy. Even what they witness is of a brutal nature, or harm is sustained. An oddity is that victims seem to express familiarity with Laffy McLafferson, often uttering how they're a fan of the show. It's possible that victims are chosen through viewership of the show. Laughing at insensitive things. And being hysterical. Did this SCP predict TikTok culture? <laughs> Show. Hi, Cyber. Episodes are themed, which is usually introduced by Laffy at the start of each show. They can be mundane themes such as pets and candy, to extremes such as mail fraud and terrorism. Yeah, this definitely predicted TikTok culture. <laughs> Oh, I just watched someone get beheaded. It was so fucking funny. Do it for the lols. Lamau, Ruffle, Keck. Each show ends with a segment which shows the studio audience, which comprises of individuals featured in the episode. Research into the identities of the audience reveals that they are all persons who were officially documented having died or gone missing in the year oh, they appeared like on the Oh, it's like a vision program. into the afterlife? Investigating reports of their deaths often shows inconsistencies and contradictions in matters. And yet is still far more consistent and funny and poignant than the average Jeremy Kyle show. Or Jimmy... Car Jimmy... Allen. Jeremy... F that guy! Concerning you know their death about. reports. Jimmy Fallon. Additionally, the bodies of the individual's remains are always missing. Did I just mix two different presenters? <laughs> Okay, you know Number what? Five. If anything, that's more of a point. Uh, that more proves my point. The fact that they're so samey and boring that I mix two different people up and I still get the same result. SCP-895. Camera disruption. Object class, Euclid. You see what I mean though, right? Like, all of these SCPs, they are really creepy. But they're also really simple. Like, a lot of the SCPs nowadays are far too elaborate for their own good. I mean, not all, but nowadays, I feel like a lot of the more modern SCPs are just trying far too hard. Like, whereas these ones that kind of founded the whole SCP concept, they were just creepy because they were so simple. And they were, I feel like these were, more pre these were more based off of people's phobias and fears. And they kind of spoke more to the people's psychology and psychosis than, it, than, any, than a lot of the stuff these days. SCP-895 is an ornate oak coffin recovered from the morgue by SCP personnel following reports of unusual footage captured by surveillance equipment installed at that location. When questioned, mortuary staff are unable to determine the source of SCP-895 and how it was transported to the location. I just decided Upon to do it. To open SCP listen, listen, just because, I, just because I turn up at your house at two o'clock in the morning with a jar of peanut butter in one hand, a bad dragon dildo in the other, and a case of beer behind me. You don't question it, you just know you're in for a good time. Don't question how or the why, just know that it exists, and therefore, you run with it. The less you question the why and the how, the less that you're gonna have a conniption. I'm just saying. P-895, agents on location found the object empty. However, observers viewing the live camera feed Proved died? otherwise. They died. Until further notice, SCP-895 must remain closed at all times. What if it wants to party? SCP-895 causes disruption in video and photographic surveillance equipment within 50 meters, similar to vivid, disturbing hallucinations with variable 
duration and regularity corresponding to the camera's proximity to SCP-895. Within a range of 5 meters from SCP-895, footage captured can cause severe psychological trauma and hysteria in most subjects. These disruptions do not ex- Wait, are they describing one of my YouTube videos? <laughs> Psychosis, hysteria, manic depression. You Guys, just quick check. Are we all feeling these three things right now? I, th I, think, I think this guy watches my streams, even though this was made nine years ago. <laughs> Stent observers physically present within the area. This SCP is notable, as oh. you can view- Oh, that's a body. I really haven't been paying attention. I've been zoning out so much to the voice, I didn't even notice there was a freaking corpse on the floor. In real time, on the SCP wiki. Number four. Number SCP. Damn it, why did I say that? Now, I, now all I can think of is Chills' voice. Number four, Burger King foot lettuce. The last thing you would want in your SCP cuter class containment facility is Burger King foot lettuce. <laughs> 173, the sculpture. Yeah, there Object he class, is! Euclid. The OG! Move to site 19. The fucking OG. Dude, I remember this. This was my first introduction to the SCP universe. 1993. Origin I played is... In fact, I think there is still footage of me playing this way back in my YouTube channel. Like, I am pretty sure that I played this as one of the first things on my YouTube channel. As of yet, unknown. It is constructed from concrete and rebar with traces of Krylon brand spray paint. SCP-173 is animate and extremely hostile. The object cannot move while within a direct line of sight. Yeah, Line it's basically of sight a weeping angel. Broken at any time with SCP-173. Personnel assigned to enter container are instructed to alert one another before blinking. Object is reported. And again, this is one of the one, this is one of the most documented SCPs, or at least it was up until the person who made the design for this thing sued the people who made it, and then were like, "Yeah, no, this isn't the design you're allowed because this is my model, and you've copied it. You've plagiarized me. You've you've." Uh, Ah, oh, that was a whole that was a whole debacle. Because ever since then, they've had to like completely redesign the way the peanut looks. To attacking by snapping the neck at the base of the skull, or by strangulation. It just wants In the a event hug. of an attack, personnel are to observe class that this four SCP hazardous is object a good containment guy. procedures. He's just really personnel eager to hug you. Personnel report sounds of scraping stone originating from within the container when no one is present inside. This is considered normal. And any change in this behavior should be reported to an acting HMCL supervisor on duty. The reddish brown. I still remember to this day there was a video that I saw a while ago of the hard to kill lizard versus this SCP. And it's one of those rare instances of a tie. It was one of the rare instances where the peanut wasn't able to kill what it was uh, going after. Because if you hit an immovable object, with an unstoppable force, what happens? Paradox? Yeah. Substance in the floor is a combination of feces the and The hard to kill lizard having its neck Origin broken is just a Tuesday is for unknown. that. The enclosure must be cleaned on a bi-weekly basis. Ugh, cleaning, ew. Number three. Number three. SCP-354, the Red Pool. Object class, Keter. The Red Pool. SCP-354 is a pool of red liquid of discovered in North Canada. The liquid is of a similar consistency oh, to of that of world, human blood, hence the colloquial name, Blood Pond, but it's not of a biological nature. The pool does not have definite banks. Soil mixes with the liquid until, at a certain point, there is more soil than liquid, and the ground is mostly solid. The liquid becomes denser as one descends deeper into the pool. If the pool has a bottom, it is yet to be reached. Oh. Periodically, entities emerge from the pool and attempt to escape from the enclosure. So this far, it's like nearly the... all creatures emerging from SCP-354 have been extremely hostile and highly dangerous. SCP-354. Oh, that, that's is... wild! It reminds me. Uh, it's it. Oh, what is it? The uh, primordial sludge. That everything was bought birthed from only they didn't quite get the message and they were like yeah you know what rather than making 
prodigious life and stuff that might benefit the universe. Let's just be an angsty fuckboy, shall we? Believed to have been first discovered right, by survivors yes, of you. a plane crash, who encountered SCP-354 by chance. Yeah. SCP-354 had been developed into a local legend long before the Foundation personnel arrived to deal with the threat. After locating the source of the legend, SCP personnel set The way this presents it, I kinda wanna go for a dip. Or at the very least, stick a straw in there and go <laughs> I'm also very afraid of going oh no around this thing because I feel like if I go oh no too many times, it's gonna go oh yeah! Little do we know, this is what happens when the uh, Kool-Aid man trips and breaks its ass. <laughs> to watch station Epsilon 38, to monitor the pool and to deter future travelers from finding it. SCP-354 was classified as Euclid until really... its properties were further discovered. I don't really see how this is very scary. I mean, literally all it does is sit there being an angsty little pool of emo red amidst a field of white, and then occasionally births out an angry blood baby. You can really tell this was the early days of the SCP stuff, can't you? At 1403 hours, at an unknown date, an unidentified entity emerged from SCP-354. Contact with watch station Epsilon-38 was lost. Oh, a no. mobile task force was dispatched to deal with the entity and were eventually successful. All personnel at watch station Epsilon-38 were found dead. Oh no! Area 354 was subsequently constructed to contain SCP-354. Creatures that have emerged from this lake vary. You know, just saying it sounds like the, all this is doing is initiating a response to your presence. Maybe if you left it the fuck alone, maybe you wouldn't have to worry about it. Maybe rather than sticking your pervy little noses into every red little pool you find, maybe they wouldn't have to be fighting themselves back. You know, cause and effect, if, if, if a penis falls in the wood, is there an inky around to hear it? Maybe the only reason it's doing this to begin with is because of your presence. The first witness account was what resembled a giant bat. The next was a bear-sized mammalian creature covered in razor-sharp spines resembling an echidna. It was virtually bulletproof, but was unable to escape the enclosure surrounding the pool. Eventually, it was neutralized by napalm. napalm. Not all things that have emerged seemed hostile. At one point, what appeared to be a human male of Indian descent came out. Oh. The enclosure wasn't fully repaired, so, to reduce potential risk, the subject was shot before it had a chance to escape. After <laughs> Dude! That's a bit mean, don't you think? I have a feel- I, I have a sneaking suspicion that it's like a sort of portal between two dimensions. That's what I think. Testing, however, it was revealed to be identical to an average human being. There are more you can find on the SCP-354 page that I recommend reading if you're interested. Number two. Number two. SCP-096. Oh. The Shy Guy. Oh god, okay. Object class. You oh, this one. This one fucking creeps me the fuck out. And I I remember having to read and deal with this guy in uh friggin' the that that old game that came out for this. The fact that you have to like break someone's tibia and cause severe pain to draw him around. Oh god. Talk about sadism. SCP-96. Oh no, that, that, sorry, that's the other guy. That's the that's the old guy. Uh Shy Guy. This is the one that like you see a picture of it and it like chases you down. Okay. Humanoid creature measuring approximately 2.38 meters in height. Subject shows very little muscle mass, with preliminary analysis of body mass suggested mild He's, malnutrition. Uh... Tall Terry. Arms are grossly yeah. out of proportion name's Tall Terry. with the rest of the subject's body, with an approximate length of 1.5 meters Look at those each. grippers, though. Skin is mostly devoid of pigment. I, I saw a video recently that went into sort of like a speculation as to how uh, the Shy Guy came into being, and it was something to do with um, the King of the Mountain, I think. And it's not canon, obviously, but it's interesting to perpet per 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 pontificate on how some of these things come into being. Implementation, with no signs of any I body I suppose that's hair. why it's so cool, it's open to interpretation. SCP-96 jaw can open to four times the norm of an ah. average human. Yo, Other just like me around a glizzy. similar to an average human, with the exception of the eyes, which are also devoid of pigmentation. It is not yet known whether SCP-96 is blind or not. I feel like this guy in the 
Peanut SCP, the living statue thingy. I feel like they just share a lot in common. They're just misunderstood. They just want hugs. It's just they don't know how to give them. They don't understand their own strength. They just want to give a cuddle. Maybe they gave a cuddle to me. I mean, I'm literally made of goo. Maybe they just haven't found the right person to hug. I'm, I don't know. It shows no signs of any higher brain functions. <laughs> and is not considered like to be me. sapient. SCP-96 is normally extremely docile. With pressure sensors inside its cell, indicating it spends most of the day pacing by the eastern wall. However, when someone views SCP-96's face, whether it be direct, via video recording, or even photograph, it will enter a stage of considerable emotional distress. SCP-96 will cover its face with its hands and begin screaming, crying, and babbling incoherently. So, once again, that sounds like how VTubers act when people see their real life faces. No, I'm an anime girl, I promise. Oh God, oh no. Well, gotta murder anybody that saw my face. Gotta keep up the facade that I am in fact an internet waifu. Currently, <laughs> approximately one to two minutes after first viewing, SCP-96 will begin running to the person who viewed its face. Documented speeds have varied from 35 kilometers an hour to more and seems to depend on distance from the target. Oh, At this that's point, horrifying. No known material or method can impede SCP-96's progress. So what if you go to space? The actual position of the target does not seem to affect SCP-96's response. Like, what, what would... What would happen if you just went into space? Like, what if you lived on the moon? It seems to have an innate sense of the target's location. Note, this reaction does not occur when viewing artistic depictions. Upon arriving at target's location, SCP-96 will proceed to kill the target. 100 What's that? <laughs> oh, Duke, I love that. What's 35 kilometers in real measurements? I see that we have somebody who is based and also using the correct measurements too. Honestly, Duke, I do not know. I don't understand these freedom units of which you talk of. Percent of cases have left no traces afterwards. SCP-96 will then sit down for several minutes before regaining its composure and becoming docile once again. It will then attempt to make its way back to its natural habitat. Due to the possibility of mass chain reaction, Yo, somebody want to get this guy's Snickers? Foundation security and large civilian loss of life, retrieval of subject should be considered. This just sounds like the average spring of spaniel that realizes you've got a snack in your pocket. Or the average me that realizes that you're about ready to tier three sub, but you forgot to press the button, so I'm gonna go and find you until you do it. <laughs> Did it alpha priority. Number one. Number one. SCP-1048, Build-A-Bear. What? Object class, Keita. SCP-1048 is a small teddy Where's bear, radical Larry? approximately 33 centimeters in height. How is that terrifying? That looks adorable. I would cuddle it. Duke, thank you for the follow. Through testing, composition of the subject revealed no unusual qualities that make it discernible from a non-sapient teddy bear. Subject non is capable of moving of its own accord. The fact that you have to say non-sapient. I mean, that's a pretty blatant derivative. Generally, teddies are pretty non-sapient. Sapient. Sentient. And can communicate through a Am I small get turned into a teddy range bear? of gestures. The subject regularly shows affection to individuals in ways found endearing by most people. Affection is roots. usually given in the form of a hug to the lower leg. The subject has also been observed dancing, jumping in place, and in two separate events, it has even drawn childlike pictures for like the janitorial this? staff. Hey guys! Is this All a foundation to you? personnel that have interacted with the subject have responded Are positively you to his yet? affection, even D-class with normally sociopathic tendencies. Attempts at direct communication with SCP-1048 have not been considered successful. Though it is capable of simple gestures to indicate a yes or no answer, it will often Definitely. not react to lines of questioning concerning its nature or where it originated from. <laughs> 
dude, all I can imagine is some scientist in a lab coat has spent 50 years at Harvard to work at the SCP Foundation, going through all of his doctorates, all of his degrees, all of his sophistication, and he gets assigned the bear. And he's going to sit there going, I am beyond this. I am beyond Ooh, this. And he's going to sit there small. looking at the bear going, Are you going to kill me? Yikes. Are you a sentient creature? Who's a good little bear? Who's a good little bear? Are you going to fucking kill me and tear me open and stuff my insides with fluff? What a cute... Oh my god, he's killing me. It is not known if this is because SCP-1048 simply does not know the answers or because it does not want to answer. Though capable of drawing pictures, it has not used its art as a form of communication beyond uh, showing SP affection, I don't think so now. even when encouraged to do so. The more anomalous behaviour of SCP-1048 was not observed until approximately seven months after it was originally secured. It is hypothesised that the subject is able to construct crude replicas of itself using various materials, huh. a process that is yet to be observed directly by Foundation staff. Dr. Carver This is getting out of hand. Now there are two of them! ...has suggested that SCP-1048 uses its endearing qualities to lull those around it into a false sense of security, allowing it to collect materials to produce these creations. Currently, there are three known creations okay, so of SCP-1048, designated SCP-1048-A, SCP-1048-B, and SCP-1048-B. I mean a doll that makes more of itself? I mean, that's a... I mean, we're probably gonna get to why this is creepy, but... SCP-1048-C The nature of these creations has been in stark contrast to SCP-1048's general behaviour, and all have exhibited extreme violence towards humans. Oh. SCP-1048-A was discovered wandering Site-24, accompanied by SCP-1048. Subject resembles the teddy bear, similar in size and shape to the original, but is made entirely out of human ears. Yes, it was the bear that took your ears. Not me. Haha, <laughs> yeah. Guys, I don't know why you keep blaming me for stealing your ears. It was the bear the whole time. Like, you thought it was really cute when I leant in to nibble your ear and then question where your ear went? Listen, just because I was hungry and just because I needed a little biomass snack to keep going, that wasn't me. It was the bear, okay? Witnesses interviewed reported that it appeared SCP-1048 was giving it a tour of Site-24 to SCP-1048-A. Dr. Carver was called oh. to the scene, along with the security team. The security team first arrived and attempted to contain SCP-1048-A. Subject emitted a high-pitched screech that inflicted intense pain in the eyes and ears of everyone in a 10-meter radius. Yeah. Ear-like growths immediately began growing on those within five- Ear-like growths? They're like- Hold on, imagine my amazing artistic skills. Like, just, just, just your body. Just like... Just like your body started... Having... Ears. Like, you got ears on your ears, and then there's an ear on your ear. And then more ears, and then ears. And then more ears. What a weird effect! I mean, it could have caused anything to grow. More fingers, toes, extra hair. Could have made anything. Common sense. Something useful. Five meters of the subject, covering their bodies in less than 20 seconds. Ooh. Each person afflicted with the symptoms died within three minutes. Yeah, resulting no in the I mean, death of another person. If my internal organs, personnel, if I had any, were replaced by ears, I'd be pretty team. dead too. Autopsies revealed the cause of death to be. Oh, that is unsettling to look at. That is actually hor horrifying. I 
asphyxiation caused by an abundance of ear-like growths manifesting in the mouth and esophagi of all victims. SCP-1048 and SCP- Okay, so you know what I said at the beginning of this one that uh, it didn't sound that bad? I am not proud enough or uh, ignorant enough to admit when I'm wrong. So I, I, am, I, am, I have enough common sense around me to admit when I was wrong. Uh, yeah, keep this one a 10 foot barge ball away from me, please. B10 for 8 A fled the scene before Dr. Carver arrived and have not been contained since the incident, though sightings of both have been reported on multiple occasions. Shortly after this incident occurred, a researcher was discovered missing an ear. Oh. According to him, it was removed through unknown means while he was sleeping. No other it victims of ear removal were found, me. so it is unclear I if SCP-1048 obtained more ears from oh, another really source, you. or if it is capable of duplicating objects or materials. SCP-1048-B Subject was discovered by several Foundation staff members in the cafeteria of Site-24. Subject's appearance was nearly identical to SCP-1048, but it no. moved in an irregular, no, I, I don't steal jerky I don't. manner. Witnesses reported that it appeared as if something was moving inside of SCP-1048-B. Anyway. Subject made no attempt to interact initially, until a burst in its seams revealed what appeared to be the hand ears? and arm of a human infant poking out oh! and grasping oh, the air. At the sight of this, a female- Alright, hold up a second. You little shit! Can you stop stealing ears? We thought you were adorable, and you gave us this pretense that you were this cute, fluffy little animat animatized bear. And we trusted you. And then you go around stealing people's ears that definitely weren't stolen by me. And you go around stealing infant limbs. What is wrong with you? That's not how you do a how do you do. Light 24. Subject's appearance was nearly identical to SCP-1048 but it moved in an irregular, jerky manner. Witnesses reported that it appeared as if something was moving inside of SCP-1048-B. Subject made no attempt to interact initially, until a burst in its seams revealed what appeared to be the hand and arm of a human infant poking out and grasping the air. At the sight of this, a female researcher screamed, and SCP-1048-B reacted by emitting a high-pitched cry similar to that of a human infant. What the subject then did to the screaming researcher is not known, but oh. it caused massive internal damage to her. Oh. In the ensuing chaos, a security team was forced to intervene. Approximately three hours after this incident, a doctor- My imagination doesn't want to explain... Internal? I am gonna leave that one there. was found unconscious and bleeding in her office. An abortion had been performed on her while she was oh, sleeping. Oh, and the you, no, you could have just left it to the whimsy! Uh, the fetus was never found. It is hypothesized that SCP-1048 used the doctor's unborn child to, to create SCP-1048-B. Information regarding what? the possible origin of SCP-1048-B oh, so is not to be what leaked the to the survivors fuck? currently undergoing therapy for the incident with SCP-1048-B. Okay, As Dr. Carver that, believes, that got really it will be dark really quickly to their recovery. SCP-1048-C resembles a teddy bear similar to SCP-1048, but composed entirely of rusted metal scraps. Subject was first sighted by yeah, Dr. Carver in his so, uh, You know how I asked where Radical Larry was? I think I would rather Radical Larry than that bullshit. Office ...while writing up a report on SCP-1048-B incident. Subject fled the room when it noticed Dr. Carver observing it. In attempts of pursuit of SCP-1048-C, Dr. Carver witnessed the death and maiming of a number of Foundation personnel as the subject exhibited extreme violence during its escape. SCP-1048-C has not been encountered since its initial sighting, 
and it is unknown whether it still resides somewhere within Site-24. The origins of any materials possibly used to construct SCP-1048-C by SCP-1048 are also unknown at this time. Extreme okay, so you know how I'm made of goo? How about I set a better precedent by shrinking myself down to a teddy bear-like shape and show the rest of the teddy bears out there how to actually be a teddy bear? I'm just saying. Like, teddy bears don't have to... Like, I, I know subversion of expectations. You present yourself as adorable, have devious intentions. So where's the teddy bear that looks horrendous, but is actually cute as fluffy and really nice? In caution is to be taken if SCP-1048-A or SCP-1048-C are encountered again. I'm straight. I wouldn't want those motherfuckers dealing with me. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this week. Oh boy. Well, the link to this video will be down in the description if you guys want to give it a check yourself. That was an experience. Um, so thank you for watching. Uh, if you have suggestions on other SCPs you would like me to check out or videos of montages of SCPs you'd like me to check out, let me know down in the comments. Uh, we have a Discord as well where you can leave suggestions for videos. In fact, this video right now was a suggestion from our subscribers. Every week we have at least one video that we watch that is a subscriber suggestion. And you can go and check that out on our Discord as well. Uh, so thank you very much for watching. If you're from the YouTube side, do make sure you come by Twitch. Twitch, thank you for putting through that and bearing with my absolutely inane prattlings. And I will see all of you in the next video. Bye-bye.